The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussion. much closer up Kev that we've been getting the last couple of weeks, by the way. Uh, the uh, the close-up. I mean, I think the, uh, the camera's a little close now. I like the shot. Still incorporating the artwork from Luxembourg. But uh, the close-up now will allow... I mean, I, I see us getting, like, Nash tribute pics of, like, holding the close-up of Nash, like... Some women like right up against the crotch, maybe. Like, see that close up right there. If you go all Kev, some shot like ladies, you can slide that laptop right down between the knees, and you can look down and get the actual view of Kevin going to town, playing the meat harmonica, flipping the mud flaps. Yeah. And uh and uh, or guys, maybe a little bit. Put, offer you a shanker to the screen. <laughs> I could see that out there. See that all over the... I didn't intend to start this way, by the way, everybody. We're just coming in hot. Click this. Kevin Nash podcast. He's Kev. I'm Sean. And uh, how was your week? Um, good. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Well, that's... Yeah, good. That's an impressive adjective for, you know, this time in our lives. That's yeah, impressive... Uh, how about how's the? Uh, I wanted to ask you what's the what's the landscape looking like? Like across the street from your house, that that waterfront. Area? The uh, what we got going on right now is it. It's like one of those Discovery channels. It's one of those one of those shows they have where they just bring in gigantic fucking heavy machinery, and they have it staged in like the beach parking lot where people would normally like go. Mm. But now since the fucking houses are laying where people would like go to the beach. So now they, they, I, I, I was coming uh, home from the gym last night and I got the double, not one, but the double with the guys with the orange cones. Like if you're going to land a plane, mm-hmm. they walked out and stopped my car on Atlantic Avenue. And Two of the biggest earth moving machines I've ever seen in my like it it actually rumbled when the the the, the road rumbled as these things uh came in front of me. I'm too fucking lazy to walk down and see what the fuck they're doing, but can you go on your roof maybe? <laughs> no, nah, I can't because the the shit's all it's all torn like it's um it almost took the houses and made them like umbrellas. Like, the, you know what I mean? Like, the, instead of them being like this in a normal pitch of their roof, now they're like this. Yeah. So it, it, it's like. Like half off the cliff. Yeah. Do they have to, they have to raise all of them, right? They, they, they've got a level. They got to level them all. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. We, we did have the uh, Artemis. Be nice and quiet around you. For- we had, we had the Artemis last night. Yes, I did see that. The we had that. We had the uh, the the rocket took off last night. As a Floridian, you ever you ever go down and watch the? Uh, I did that once. I saw the um, SpaceX. Uh, I can see it from I can see it from my my roof. Yeah, I mean, it, the minute it takes off, I can see it. Kind of it's, exciting, it's, I guess. I, I it, it's kind of you know, it, it kind of gives you like a, a a prep for the end of Earth. Because it, it starts off and you just kind of see this orange glow. And then it, as it comes up, it kind of turns into kind of a mushroom. So I was glad today that uh, it was uh, breaking news as I drove down here that um, Poland and uh, NATO and the Ukraine have decided that uh, it probably wasn't a, a Russian missile that killed the uh, the two Polish people. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. I liked last night. They, 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 they try so hard to fucking make news. And the, the ladies on, on whatever the fuck. I think about even Laura Engel that I was watching. God forbid. But they're like, you know, this could start World War Three. I don't think fucking two Polish guys that got whacked by a fucking, <laughs> by a missile is going to fucking start Armageddon. You know, I just, I, I yeah, how many people did Hitler off before? Uh, fuck, for, uh, how many? Six gr- million. Granted, we granted we didn't have nukes, but yeah, I mean, fucking hell, I don't, I don't get it, I don't get it, I, I just don't see, you know, I mean, it, it was such a slow news day. I guess that's why they they talked about it. Well, I mean, I mean, I know your Lily stock took off. I heard. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. I, I'm I assuming it did. I saw an announcement that insulin was free. I go to Twitter for my news. <laughs> so uh, I do too. That's funny. It's funny you and I do that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, say, I, 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 I come on, people. I go to I go to my I go to Twitter to watch Tim Miller fucking roast Bannon. That's right. I, I go to I go to. It was uh, 59 seconds of ping pong yeah. with one paddle and a yeah. wall. So yeah, yeah. The, the, let's let's just take a moment, and you know, no matter how you look at it, the fucking Republicans have taken over the House, which means by at least Valentine's Day, two dollar gasoline, buck fifty probably. You think? Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, and then yeah. inflation should probably be around three mm-hmm. percent, because I mean, they, I mean, they've got the they've, they've got the answers, so th- those will be some good things. We'll still be drinking, you know, baby's blood, and and, and working on our in the basement of yes, the pizzeria of, of the pizzeria that doesn't have a that doesn't have a basement. But uh, can we do a live show from there? Maybe it could be our first from uh, from Comet. Yeah, from Comet. Our first, uh, some people uh, were uh, making some suggestions. Nobody has mentioned that yet in the public, but I just thought maybe it would be a good uh, launching point. Uh, they didn't mention that, but they are mentioning stuff like Rob D enjoyed our show last week. He said, You said Hotel Pennsylvania on the Click This podcast. I got a room for my wife and I. I was young and it was my first time staying in New York City. How does a place across from the garden suck so bad? They had zero hot water. I'll never live it down, but it's a good story. And Kev, it was a garbage stay. It was the reply. <laughs> it, I mean, it was unbelievable. And this is WrestleMania, man. Like you come back from the ladder match, and you're you're in a, at, at, at the at the Red Roof Inn in downtown Manhattan. <laughs> Uh, WWE DX ECW. I love how you open. Kevin is through the process of losing. Uh, everyone grieves differently. There certainly isn't a rule book to grief. Pink Floyd playing was no coincidence. He's with you and Mrs. Nash. Please tell her to keep calling on him uh, to get her out of the funks. He is there and listening, sending love. Thank you, WWE. Kenny Atkins, Big Kev, I understand exactly where you're coming from on the grieving. I lost my daughter in January to a fatal car wreck. Two dumbasses were racing, and one lost control and hit her head on. No two people grieve the same. I have okay days and really bad days. Prayers to you and your family. You're not supposed to outlive your kid. Kenny, uh, thoughts out to you as well. Uh, thoughts and prayers. Uh, this is, and this is uh, today is a, a month for me. Yes, it is. To yes, the day. To the day. Yeah, six, six, six o'clock this morning. I was awake, and it was a month. So that's about the only thing that could get you up at six, right? I just didn't, hadn't been to bed yet. Oh, or a flight. Is um, not to park on this road, but uh, does uh. The significance of, of of the anniversary, like you'll never you'll never forget a Wednesday. And well, I mean, and on top of that, we do this on Wednesday. Yeah, but, but I mean, even if this moved to Thursday, Wednesdays would still be. 
Oh, that's interesting. The signif- I never noticed the significance of that. I think because yeah. I'm 50, my brain doesn't work. But yeah, so this like has every, to stay Wednesday. Every time, every time I come down here, it was always... Like every time T and I came down here, it was always Wednesday. And then we did... Uh, you know, when, when when T passed, we did Saturday... But then we turned right around and went, we went Wednesday. And, you know, it was like, it's, um, I've actually, I mean, like, you know, he, he set me up, like, you know, with all, like, I, I actually was on, on the air today without any help for the first time. You know, so I didn't log on till later because I was waiting for the call. I was sitting here looking at my cell yeah. phone. I was like, "No, oh, I, 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 I actually talked to him on the way down." Okay, good. I talked to him on the way down, and I said, "Man, I said, you know, let's get this. This, 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 this fucking, you know, it's it's number four. We gotta, we got we gotta get this, buddy." If you're, so, if you're, if you, if you make contact again, I'm just curious about something. Tony Katane was so hot in life until she got a little older. Does she go back to the hot form in the afterlife? Did I, I never told you my Tony Katane story. Didn't know you had one, but... Uh, oh, hold on here. Hold on here. Is that Tony calling from the beyond? She, see, no. I mentioned her, and then she fucking... Hold on. I mean, see, see, I'm cursing I, again. Let me see if I can... Try not to curse. Let me see if I can find it here. Keep keep talking. Yeah, no, I put a Buddha on my desk to, to remind me to not... Uh, to not cuss. To not cuss uh, too much. Although, look at him. He probably, he had a mouth like a goddamn drunken Moroccan rug trader. Um, is, that yeah, such Tony, a, is, that, is that such a thing? It is now. And uh, Tony Katane, uh on the hood of the, some iconic images, right, from media and music. So as I look for, as I look here, I found her. The hood of the Jaguar. It's like David Coverdale doesn't even exist. Okay, so I, I don't know if we can if we can get a good shot of her on this. But this is off my Instagram. Uh, let me get around this fucking gimmick here and open it up. Yeah, open her up. Oh, hold on here. Careful, you don't hit the Pornhub uh, icon right there. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, it yeah. doesn't. Uh, I don't think Instagram. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay, so those are the good years. I'm thinking. No, right? this is a couple years. It's like that was like a year before she passed. So did she pull herself? Because I, I saw pictures. It looked like she hit the wall. It, it did. Uh, maybe so she pulled is, herself together. This is um, May eighth, two thousand twenty-one. Oh wow! Was she a fan? So I, I, great story. So we do a uh, St. Louis, uh, as you can see, St. L- St. Louis pop culture uh, gimmick there. So um, we're the Embassy Suites, and if anybody's that stays as a state at Embassy Suites, you know that, that they have that atrium. You know the rooms are on the outside of the atrium where they've got the you know the. They look uh, down onto the yeah uh, yeah kind of like the Pennsylvania Hotel. Nothing like it, but anyway, um, so like two o'clock in the morning, man. It, it's it, it, there's nothing like those uh, fire alarms in hotels. That, yeah, yeah. It's like there's no way you can you know. I mean, I, I've tried putting shaving cream in them before. Like, there's nothing you can do. So. I'm on, I think I'm on the 11th of 16 floors and everybody is rushing out and going down the stairs. And so I open my door and I just, I'm, I'm watching the people walk by me and I'm watching the people, you know, no, nobody's taking the elevators, of course, they're taking the stairs. This is before my knee replacement or maybe shortly after it. Maybe I think it was after my, my knee replacement, but it was one of those things where, and I'm thinking to myself, we're in an atrium, so smoke is going to rise. I'm on the 11th floor. I don't see any smoke. There's no smoke above me. There's no smoke below me. So I'm just, I'm going to sit here. So I just go over the railing and I put my arms like on the railing and just kind of like look over. And not to say that I'm, you know, 
more intelligent than they are. It's just that it is a concrete and still building. I can still get to the stairwell and smoke rises. So if it's, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to win on this. Mm. So I'm just, I'm sitting there maybe three or four minutes and I hear somebody go, you so you're not going to go down. I turn around and I look at him like, I know her, but I can't place her. Cause she's got this mane of hair, right? And it looks like your doll a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. So she asked you if you're going to go down, and yeah. boy, did she leave the goalie out of the net there. What do you say? I just said, no, man. And I said, uh, you're Tawny, right? She said, yeah. I introduced myself, and we just sat up there you know, until they, they stopped the, the gimmick. And uh, I had some wine in my room, and we sat down. We had a couple of cocktails. And we talked, and then she went, you know, to her room. I went and I laid down. In your room, ostensibly. In my room. Yeah. Uh, I mean, separate, you know, mm -hmm. because I had heard all those stories with she, she dated that I uh, was married to Steve Finley, the baseball player, the baseball right? player. I, she, you know, there was some 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 things that went. Um, I think she beat the fuck out of him, didn't she? Pretty much, but I wasn't there, so I I, I can't allegedly, uh, allegedly, allegedly. But I think that we're going to have a, we're going to have an, uh, another hearing on that. Uh, There's a special counsel that's been appointed. Yes, it's been appointed. I think we're going to get that all cleared up. But um, so it's like, I'm sitting there and now I can't sleep. So I said, what's the worst thing you can do? Go to YouTube and pull up White Snake and pull up This Is Love and watch the video. And you're like, wow, like I forgot. Like there are certain women in your chronological uh, order of life, like Ursula Andres, Raquel Welch, Ginger. B. Arthur. <laughs> B. Ar B. Arthur. I mean, B. Arthur. I mean, I, that's, a, that's a whole different, that's like Cleopatra. The early years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. B. Arthur as Maud. So Just, what was a childhood? Yeah, so go back. So like, what was the first sex symbol that? that I had uh, two. I, I was lucky enough to have two. It was uh, Barbara Eden. Oh, Jeannie. It, is I Dream of Jeannie. Actually, three. Ginger. When people say Marianne or... Marianne oh, or, from the... Uh, yeah, Gilligan's it's like, Island. Like, there's like Marianne or Ginger. I'm like, What? Some the guys liked the wholesome nature of Marianne, the librarian type fantasy. Oh man, like it's the difference between a ten and a six. Like mm. what? Dom, Dom say Mrs. Howell. So, <laughs> that's, well, good yeah, thing the teeth come on, come out. Come on, look, look at like look at that. Really, look, look at the. Come on, guys. It's a different vibe. A different vibe. I'm, I'm with you, but you know. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. And then, and I thought uh, Elizabeth Montgomery, Bewitched, was another one at that same era. So okay, and then as a as a, like a teenage Nash, it's now teenage we're into Nash, what year? Teenage Nash would probably have been. Well, I had Raquel Welsh on my. I had that poster uh, from BC with the uh, fur bikini on. Um, I had that. Um, she was actually bottomless. You just didn't know. Poof. Back in those days, nobody was, knew. With the 60s. It was a girl girl next door. Full pelt. Uh, full fucking pelt. <laughs> full pelt. <laughs> vest. Lap vest. Le less fur on, on Fess Parker's head. Look at that. Come on. Come on. Cool. That's that's hot. And then we we went to the Farrah Fawcett era. Yeah, see, you know what? Something she was a little too Barbie doll perfect. It was a little too. It all was like a little plastic. See, I prefer more like a Suzanne Summers. Dude, when you kick back, fucking with the with the lotion in the hand, when you're in full Gaylord Perry, 
you know, I, I don't want to be thinking about blemishes or, you know, you know uh, she kind of got cankles. I want, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's. Think about John Derrick's run. John Derrick goes from Ursula Andres, okay, <laughs> to Linda Evans, to Bo Derrick. That's, that's, that's John Derrick's run. How about Linda Carter? Wonderful. I've never been that much on the dark really? here. See that 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 was that was my that was that was my go to as what? as a kid. The the, the dark, the raven haired mysterious. At that same time, I, I I think I was going home occasionally to Cato. Kalen, Cato Kalen? No, Cato pr- from from the Green Hornet. Oh, a little Bruce Lee. Your reference. Oh, the I got you right. Yeah. Kato was the one that would would uh, fight. And you see, now I'm getting him mixed up with what was the guy's name in the Pink Panther that would jump out and attack Peter Sellers? That was the same kind of deal. The yeah, but it wasn't. It was. It wasn't, it wasn't Bruce Lee. No, it was not. Oh, all right. <clears throat> uh, so uh, so and that was it. So did you see Tawny? Then obviously you took a picture, so you saw her the next day. Yeah, we were we we actually were like two booths down. So. It was a slow show, too. Miserable show. <clears throat> what was her wine of choice? Well, she had to drink what was in the room. Or did you order something? Yeah, no. Ordered shit. Drink what I, drink what I drink. Or fucking, there's a plastic cup. In, there's a plastic cup in a fucking sink in the bathroom. Knock yourself out. How were her feet? Did you have occasion to see her feet? Feet were good. Yeah. Yeah, good yeah. feet. Yeah. For as many times as she was, she like in her pajamas. Um, she dressed. No, she was. She put on a. uh, She put on a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. She wasn't running out of the fire like in a negligence. No, no, because that's how I would have directed it in my head. That's full. That's completely how it's directed. So she, she, and and, and the way she walked up to me was almost like, okay, like I'm not the only person that is not going along with this. Can you believe it? It's finally here. It's the most wonderful time of the year, unless you get stressed out about how to pay for it. Savewithconrad.com can help you make this the best Christmas ever. You won't make a house payment for the next two months. That's right. Skip your next two house payments and use all that cash for your extra holiday expenses. And come next year, you're going to have a lower monthly payment. Don't put Christmas on a credit card. Pay your credit card debt off at savewithconrad.com. NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lender. Savewithconrad.com. You know. well, I could go one way or the other. That headline in the paper the next day. Famous actress and wrestler killed in a fire because they were too stupid to go down the stairs. They could have gone either way. It wasn't going to go that way. I That's mean, a fascinating story. I, I, nothing like that happens to me. I, one night, the honky-tonk man overstayed his welcome in my hotel room, telling me a story about what he was going to tell Vince McMahon if he ever insulted him by asking him to go into a fake Hall of Fame. As he's telling me the story, he's on his way to the bathroom. He forgot he had undid his pants. They fell right down to his fucking ankles. As he's standing, un- unbeknownst to him, as he's telling, as he's acting out, Vince, you motherfucker, you like standing there in the the fucking with his jock on. Is there. the hockey jock in the in the Hall of Fame? Oh, I don't, th- I don't think so, because I, I just kind of remember. Uh, I always remember him saying he's never going. In. I'm sure he'll go in, but uh, no one says no to that call. But but Bruno, the most honorable man in the business. I don't know if I told it on this air. I told it in my book. I, people have asked me about it. We agreed to an episode of Timeline where he was going to cover the 60s because uh, I knew he was getting the call. I got the tip that Hunter was going to Pittsburgh to talk to him. And we, we were going to do it before the announcement. We lost it. Uh, there was a booking problem. Then the announcement happens. He's going to do the show. And they, of course, want to look at all his bookings and you know, have him not do them. But he told them in, when he was in Connecticut, he said, I got to do the show for these guys in New Jersey. We were supposed to do it. but And he called me and he said, Sean, I want to tell you the price I told them because they would have tried to buy me out. So uh, if they ask you, this is what I told them you're paying me. He was smart enough to know when they said to him, well, what's this video in New Jersey you're doing? He's like, I shook this guy's hand because we couldn't do it the day we were supposed to. I have to do it for them. 
And we're like, well, well, how much is it? He knew to say a high number because they wouldn't match it. And he did my fucking show. Told you know, him. And he still looks good to this day. I always say that every time you bring him up and people will always make you think of, you know, he's, he, he passed. So I always, I always love, I love to say, I say that anytime somebody brings up Bruno, I say, he still looks great. You know, I, he was in such shape every time I saw him right to the end. He probably looks better now than me. Oh, yeah. Bruno was, Bruno was, he was, an, he, was a, he was a different cat. It was a different time. We got and Honky Talk Man is in in 2019. Did he go in? Yep, I'm looking right here. And he took Honky it. Talk Man 2019. Ah, Wayne, you goddamn sellout. That's he why he's just, telling everyone not to. He just to wanted. Him. He just wanted to fucking throw his salamander at you. That's all, man. Oops. 1979 Augustine says, love you dudes. Thank God for this channel. I absolutely love you guys and listening to you guys. Bullshit. That's what we do best. Pull up a stool. Carpe diem. The verified account ordeal is a big problem. Impersonating someone is one thing, but us now having to go to everybody's profile to see if it's them, not just wastes everyone's time. Also, People you don't follow can and will show up in your feed since Twitter will show you people your friends follow. will try to push tweets. And that. Listen, it's a lot of text, but you're absolutely right. We're going to have a problem. We've even seen, I didn't foresee a stock market issue, but apparently there was one I'm hearing. Um, some interesting uh, impersonations, too, of, of somebody, Elon Musk accounts. Do, do people, I don't get it. I mean, I go on Twitter once a day. I press that thing where people like mention you mm -hmm. and I read, I read that line. I'm done. That's it. I, one time. But you don't, so you don't look at a feed for like people you follow for news or, or. I'll read, I'll, I'll usually re read Rex Chapman. Rex mm -hmm. Chapman, he played, he played in Kentucky, played in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. I, he, I think he's funny. Um, there's a couple other people that I'll see what they're up to during the day, but like most most people, it's just like like when 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 Trump was on Twitter, I would always see what he had to say every day. You wanted to educate yourself, you know, and I don't have you know, people go crazy with. I don't give a, a a flip that Elon Musk bought it. That's fine. That's it, that's it's an asset. I understand why he'd want it, and you have to monetize. I don't have a problem with monetizing things. Giving people options, doing animated little avatar for the youngins out there. What do wants to do to monetize? That's fine. I don't have the issue with that. My only issue is that I will now know, not know what's verified because you could just buy that. Chiquita Banana, we've just overthrown the government of Brazil. That's, and that's a real banana republic at that point. There's, oh, there's the uh, verified account. Ringspan says, through the shattered glass is Jeannie Clark's autobiography. She was in WCW as Lady Blossom. I did not know that that was her real name when I read that last week. I think she was I, also. I, and the thing is, like, uh, um, Jeannie and Steve lived out west of Atlanta. And yes. my, my wife and Jeannie and Steve and I have, have been out to dinner a couple of different times while they were still together. I just, I didn't, even, I just didn't put two and two together. No, me either. I mean, I, I knew Lady Blossom. Obviously, I feel, I feel shitty. I feel shitty that I mean, you know, that that I didn't keep the book. But I'm well, now sorry. the cat's out of the goddamn bag. Well, isn't well it? I mean, I'm I'm sorry, but I'm I'm kind of partial to Steve, so. <laughs> You took his side in the breakup? Yeah, a little little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cap says, I'm 36 and old school, so the Marathon Man reference made my day. Is it safe? Was the actual reference to my impending root canal. God damn, I'm going tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. What did they do to me? Such perfect teeth until I hit 50. I got, I got Zabisco'd. Uh, I, I gotta get it. I gotta get another crown. I gotta, uh. What are they do? What are they gonna do for a cracked tooth? What do you get a cap? Um, it depends if it, it, you, you might need a root canal. 
Oh, if you somebody just, else told me that you might need a root canal, and then they'll, and then they'll put a they'll put a, they'll put a crown on it. Can't they just close it? Like put a put a cap on it, and be done with it. Why do they have to go no, into the root because canal? If you if you damage the root, then it, you'll the tooth will die, and you'll. you'll Wesley, a, you got two crowns this morning. How, did it hurt? Are you able to talk? Obviously not. Uh, you see that? <laughs> Look at that. I'm gonna be mute. Nah, they numb me. All right. Well, we'll Wesley says he can talk. Adam says, Ox Baker did it. I get you, bro. I get you. There's a great thing on YouTube. I want you guys to search it out. I, I would never direct you to another podcast unless I felt there was some entertainment value there. Don't go to any other, other wrestler podcast. But Joey Diaz, there's a compilation on Joey Diaz's podcast. Of he use he he eats these edibles called Stars of Death, and so he ha there's a compilation of the condition of all his guests when they eat the Stars of Death. Two went to the hospital. One girl, she's a female comic, I forget her name. She gets up and just walks out, and he just he's rolling. He's like, "Yeah, hey, baby, no problem. Go ahead. We want to lay down on the couch. Lay down on the couch. No problem. We'll just talk about." It. Yeah, they're right in the middle. Her name, who, what was her name? The one in the middle. She's the one that had to go lay down. It was another girl, uh, Ada, Ada Rodriguez, her name is. She was a comedian on there. She says she she tried to drive home and couldn't, so she pulled into a 7-Eleven and just started walking in circles in the parking lot until the ambulance came. So I, I'm just, I guess I'm selling these stars of death to everybody yeah, in absolutely. California right, right now, right, but right. it is such a great compilation. It's about 30 minutes of the great Joey Diaz. And you, uh, there are 125, 125 mil milligrams per gummy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Oof. Uh, I know we don't do guests, but maybe, maybe, maybe soon we can, we can get Joey on or something. Maybe, uh, maybe on something special. We'll do something special for Joey. Uh, yeah, on a Death Star. <laughs> one of the stars of death. You, you'll have to take one, though, to, in order to. No, I ain't taking 125. 125, baby? Right. Shit, man, that's I, I'm I'm. I do not like the feeling uh, at, at this point in my life of trying to function and being incredibly high. Mm. It's just like, yeah, I'm a I'm a sativa person. Like you know, like that's the mellowing effect, right? No, the sativa is like the up. Like you, you focus, like you get shit done. But don't you get the pa paranoia from that? I don't. All right. But then again, I'm not taking 125 milligrams. You know? Right. So. Maybe you took 125 chair shots and that, and, and it's, you don't get paranoid at all because of the. Uh, the, the, the I don't think I took anywhere near. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be surprised if I took 50. That, dude, that's still a lot. Huh? That's still a lot. Yeah, but it That's wasn't a like a, yeah, I, I, I got my hand up on 99.9% on okay, well, of them. I wanted to ask you something. As a professional athlete who played basketball in the pros in Europe and also in college, I the concept of home court or home field advantage, you always heard this, and if you're a betting man, it's something you consider, but, oh, they're home, they're home. And I always kind of poo-pooed the, ah, why, what, so the crowd's loud. Maybe they don't hear an audible. Then I saw that the Dolphins got a new stadium in 20-something, okay, 2018, 17, right. whatever, Steve, you can look it up. When they built the stadium, they intentionally designed the direction. The sun so that, hits. Yes, the, the sun, visitor's yes. bench is covered in sun, and the, the home game. bench isn't. So a reporter... I don't know the source, but a reporter uh, got a, did a thermometer reading on both sides. Recently, this season, one side of the field was 80 degrees. The other side was 102. You know, and, and, and for, for basketball, like, so you get up, say you're going you're gonna to play University of Kentucky and you're in Louisville. So you get up for the hotel. You know that you because you're there the night before, so you get up and you go and a lot of times you just you know with your sweatpants you'll go down get breakfast, get on the bus, 
go to the building, do like a, a walk through, you know, you'll do the three man weave to kind of just warm up and you'll run, you know, the, you'll run their offense uh with the with this practice squad will run their offense so you can you know see it one more time get your defensive assignments and then you go back and now on a normal day you'd be at, uh, at on campus you'd be fucking around doing shit now you're pretty much stuck at the hilton in lexington with nothing to do mm -hmm. so you end up laying in bed you sleep you watch tv you're you're it's like it and like the, by the time your biorhythms, by the time it's, you know, five five twenty or whatever it is to get back on the bus, like the last thing you want to do is 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 go play basketball. So it puts you in that like zombified state, that relaxed it just, it just, state. It just, ta it just takes you. It just takes you out of your um, daily routine. Yeah, you know. But what about the physical build? I know travel can be an issue too, especially if you're going a long distance to play the other team cross country or whatever. But what about the buildings? Because the the the, the Dolphins thing with the sun, obviously, you're not going to deal with that in basketball because of the uh, because of the uh, there you go. Oh no! In basketball, what you do is you make sure, like in the in the in the old Boston Garden, if you were in the visitors' locker room. The, the thermostat was it was 120 in that in that locker room, and then at University of Tennessee, Ray Mears was the coach, and he was like one of those psychologists, you know, like a like a general type guy. He found this Did like you hit him, huh? Never. Okay. He um he found this color of like almost like a, 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 a between a pink and a salmon. And they painted the entire locker room, visiting the locker room that color. And it was supposed to be the color that they like painted the cells of incredibly hostile, like vicious sociopaths, psychopaths. Because like it had an, a calming it, effect. Yes. Ah. So 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 they would go in there and this this you know this, and they would be slowly, you know, mm -hmm. melted down while. You know, we had, you know. I was a Celtics fan in the 80s, and I know that they talked about the building just being notorious for, for having no air conditioning in in the whole building, let yeah. alone the locker room. And, uh, you yeah, know, I guess wrestling ran there too and stuff, so these guys had to work without, without air. But was there an uglier team in the history of all sports than like the 1986 Celtics? You can start with, a, listen, Larry Bird was a hero of mine. We'll get to that later. Oh, we're just talking about actually physical physical ugliness. Oh my God, Dennis Johnson, uh, Frankenstein, Kevin McHale, uh, the 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 chief. Larry was nothing uh, to look at, as talented as he was. Bill 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 Wald, Bill Wald not exactly uh, GQ. <laughs> I know, fell off the turnip truck. Um, brutal team. To, I I think half of their wins probably came from the physical intimidation. Of you know a black guy with freckles uh, coming at you, uh, uh, you know bringing the ball down the court, coming at you DJ. like a sp coming at you like a spider monkey. That boy sure. could play some. D he could play yeah, some sure. D, man. Sure, sure. Listen, we have a big announcement. It's it's been long enough. Thirty thirty eight minutes for Christ's sake. There's a big announcement. Drum roll. Um, click this is coming to ad free shows everybody and i know it's on ad free shows just as a regular play right now but you will be getting live exclusive content and the debut is tuesday december 6th at 9 p.m okay tuesday no uh december 6th 9 p.m uh the the first the debut will be Kevin sitting with you, our friends, if you join ad-free shows and subscribe to ad-free shows, and watching the famous Goldberg loss. Okay? So here's how this is going to work. I had nothing to do. I did not choose that. I just wanted to... to that was a request. That was, was a request. That was, yeah, was nothing that I chose. He's not putting himself over. It was a request. And listen, we listen to our, our friends, our company, whoever made the request. But uh, that will be the first. That'll be the debut. Um, 
when you go to adfreeshows.com and you sign up to become a member, you could do this right now to lock your place. There are different tiers to what you can do. All $29 level members and higher on ad-free shows will be invited to join this exclusive watch along on Zoom. Okay, Kev, I'm going to do you uh, do a tutorial of Zoom for you uh, in the next couple of weeks because we'll be uh, on that platform for this, I believe. Um, you know, I might not be Mr. Podcast, but every fucking time you do a, uh An audition, you're auditioning on Zoom is what you're going to tell me. Right? I, okay. I can, uh, Good. I was hoping that was the case, but you know, I, I don't but then again, assume. But then again, I do it on my phone, so <laughs> on this, on this, on this, on this Apple, it could be a, a completely uh... and the and the big secret, Kev, is that the phone and the computer are exactly the same. No, not if you don't. Not if you got a Samsung and you're on. Oh, that is true. And you're on an Apple. Your friends out there, buy Kevin a uh, <clears throat> buy Kevin a uh, an iPhone for his next uh, birthday. Um, no, so, instead of that, instead of that, be the be the jack off that paid two hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars for Jobs as Birkenstocks. Jesus! Oh, what did they they auction them off? They auction yeah, the two hundred twenty eight thousand uh, dollars they got for his, his toe cool jam to, Birkenstocks. Be cool to get the sweater, maybe the turtleneck. Or something. There they yeah. are. Good lord. Whew. In a very secure gun case, it looks oh, two, like. Two, two, 218. I was off. I'm sorry. But folks, if you want to join us, the $29 level is the magic number. Uh, th- that level and up will get you invited to attend the watch along. If you join the top tier, top guy, if you become a top guy and get the top subscription, you get to come up and chat live with Kev that night. You will be unmiked and be able to talk to Kevin and ask questions. I might eat one of those 125 milligram gimmicks that night. Just You're to... going to need to, brother. About yeah. a half hour. And once it kicks, we sign right off. <laughs> um, so this is exclusive. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to talk to Kevin. And listen, it's a subscription. Stay a top guy. We'll do stuff. We'll do stuff every month. Okay, we'll hang with you guys. Go to adfreeshows.com, sign up. Don't forget the date. It is Tuesday, December the 6th, 9 p.m. Eastern time for our friends. We try to get that time because, you know, the West Coast is going to want to be a part of it, so they'll be 6 o'clock. Our folks in England are going to stay up a little late that night. That'll be midnight, but it'll be exciting to, to see our public. 11 soft, all of you. Wear your gear, man. Wear your gear. We're calling you first. It is time I, just, for- I just I just want to make it clear that Please uh, England is five hours difference. Yeah, the, it, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What? It's two a.m. I was a math teacher. Um, it's two a.m. And so stay up late. Set your alarm. It's something like you know. I stayed up watched that damn rocket take off last night. Stay up late. You never know what'll happen. Kevin stayed up late that one night. Tony Katane ran into his room and had wine. That's exa- exactly. Second best thing will be uh, asking Kev a question on uh, on ad free shows. Stiff one of the week. Stiff one of the week, folks. You know that our stiff one of the week is often sponsored by our friends at Blue Chew. Blue Chew becoming as synonymous as the click this show itself. A lot of comments online about correcting your 11 soft with some Blue Chew. It's cold. You're going to get cozy with your lady or your man or whatever you're into, and you're going to have to answer the call, gentlemen, and Blue Chew's going to help you get there. It's about confidence. You don't need a disorder to enjoy the product that Blue Chew supplies. It's a unique online service. They deliver the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but they're in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. Take them anytime, day or night, plan ahead, be ready when the opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. Once you're approved, you get the prescription within days. Best part, all done online. Revolutionizing the dick pill process. This is happening online. No visits to the doctor's office. No awkward conversations in the pharmacy. 
Blue Chew's tablets are made in the United States, prepared and shipped directly to your door in discreet packaging. Guys, there's nothing sexier than confidence. And uh, in the bedroom, where it counts, get hooked up, all right? Uh, you're just going to improve the surety and strength of what's going on downstairs in your pants. Uh, chew it and do it. Have some better sex, guys. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Uh, try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code NASH at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code NASH, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details, important safety information, and we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this segment, which is the stiff one of the week. I went outside wrestling completely for this, Kev. This is one of my favorite clips. I often... There's something very annoying happening in society today, and I'm going to take issue with the left for this. I know, I know. This whole, this whole like cancel culture and this thing where everyone's got to be nice and you're ostracized and canceled if you have the reputation of not being nice. The New York Times, which I read, pissed me off one time because in their arts and leisure section, they had a column where they said, we should really, um, I'm paraphrasing, but, the, but the, the crux of it was, we need to reexamine who, we, who we've, uh, the men who we have awarded the uh, iconic Broadway stamp to, guys like Bob Fosse and others. Now, if crimes were committed, I understand, but for some of them, the reasons they gave were they were mean. They were difficult with actors. Kevin, if, they ca- if everybody who was difficult with a goddamn actor or every actor that was difficult with a director and the director pushed back, uh, the, uh, the, the offices in Paramount would empty. How about every asshole that's that's difficult to the person that's serving them a coffee at Starbucks? Plenty of those. That's a, every, number one. I mean, it's just if everybody was just to to to, to tune it tune it, tune the hate back, just three clicks, just three. Yeah, but not everybody's nice. Not everybody's a nice guy. Hitchcock was difficult. He saw actors as 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 cattle. I guess I don't know if that's a direct quote, but it's attributed well, I mean, to him. Could you could you imagine could you imagine getting up in the morning and 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 wandering by a mirror naked and being Hitchcock? I'd be pissed off too, exactly. Do you know. Do do. So so here is the director David O. Russell with the actress Lily Tomlin. Now I gotta say. This starts with Lily, I feel, being a little difficult and insulting to the production as 60 people are running around trying to get I Heart Huckabees made, and she's sitting at the desk and uh, being a bit of a pain in the ass, and David O. Russell finally has had enough. Now, the way this video was caught was, Kevin, as you know, there's the, the video playback monitors. Even when they were shooting film, I guess everyone shoots video now, but even when they were shooting film, there would be a, 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 a video feed of what is through the lens that was running all the time. So everyone could look through that. So even though the cameras weren't running, the video feed was running. So someone on the crew uh, captured uh, this video. And, uh, and here we go. Lily and uh, David O. Russell on the set of uh, I Heart Huckabee. Yourself. See, it's harder, to, it's harder actually to pick it up from the damn desk. Okay. You were looking. You were planning. Right, take a beat and preset it. You can put the fucking thing down. You can put the folder down for a second to, well, to use both hands. Yeah, and take your legs off the I desk and a whole bunch of other stuff. That says you gotta keep. You can, you can take your legs down. Too. We can find. <sighs> okay, for Christ's sake, let's just take it one fucking line at a time, instead of changing everything. As we, it's very difficult to even create what you're going to do when it's constant a barrage of change this, change this, do this, do this. No, wait, wait, do it a different way, do it a different way. Don't get me started. Okay, so I'm just saying, let's just, you know, it's impossible. One actor's doing one thing, another actor's doing another, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not, as, I'm not as brilliant as you. I can't uh, keep up with no, you. No, but we're being very efficient. We're being very efficient? Being patient with you. So Let's try. rehearse. You're please. being impatient. No, Let's rehearse. I couldn't understand you. No, it's not the first time. Fuck you! I'm just trying to fucking help you. Do you understand me? No, no, you're not. I'm being a fucking collaborator. I'm just trying to help you figure out you're, you're, the fucking picture. Hey, bitch! I'm not here to be fucking 
yelled at. I worked on this fucking thing for three fucking years not to have some fucking <laughs> yell at me in front of the fucking crew when I'm trying to fucking help you, bitch. Figure it out yourself. Well, I have to figure it out. Yeah, fuck yourself. He's not done yet. I would be done right there. He's not done yet. He makes an appearance through that door, I believe. Cruise done. No, you said I never fucking yelled at you, you fucking standard. There you go. Kev, you're on that set. What are you doing at this point? You ready to shoot the scene with Lily? I'm walking to craft services. Can I have a donut? No, I have a cup of coffee. It's just I I I mean I've never seen anything like that before, but I mean I've heard some I've heard some 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 brutal things go down on sets before. Yeah. You know, it's like That's a little over the top. That's kind of over the top, right? But that that had to be a cumulative effect. She must have been driving him crazy. Well, yeah, but at the same time it's just like when you're the director, like to me, like you're the coach. You're the general, right? You got to hold it together. They look yeah, to you I, for leadership. I and agree. it's like if, if when when you, like she definitely won that <laughs> because you know once once she realized like once once he's like that's almost assault when you're throwing things off the table. Like, like man, I, yeah, some I, some PA almost gets wailed in the corner when the the folder goes flying off the off the desk. There's, there's, a, there's a, I bet you, I bet, I bet she wouldn't pull that shit on the guy standing next to him in that shot. The, uh, Dominic Wasn't suggests that, uh, a little one, a little stars of death maybe for Lily would have, uh, would have calmed the situation down or maybe for David. Florida man or Jersey guy. Neither of these individuals is nearly as interesting I'm as looking David here, I'm, Russell. I'm, I'm, I'm looking here and what, what, what Wesley's just put that, that Russell is a notorious asshole. Clooney knocked him out. Oh, is that true? He got hit? If, okay, good. if George Clooney knocks you out, I mean, geez. <clears throat> uh, On the Three Kings set, which was with uh, Ice Cube and, was that, was that uh, Marky Mark? Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Wow. All right. Oh, so, okay. So Clooney was defending a crew member who was being assaulted by... The uh, the brilliant. That's what I'm saying. Though. I mean, if, if I mean, if if Clooney if, if Clooney's calling you out, you you got to be an asshole. Yeah, I guess I guess this is a bit a bit. Of, he's got a bit of a rep. David does. Yeah. I want to work with him. How about? <laughs> I think you'll be safe. <laughs> day one, day one, pick a hand. <laughs> I don't want to play this. I, I I hear there I hear there's some some footage of uh, there's some uh, um, B-roll footage of, of some uh, video feed footage of Hitchcock calling Janet Lee a. <laughs> I'm going to try to get my hands on that. But delivered from, in such an erudite way, I don't think she mind from Psycho. Yeah, I don't think he minded. He said, "You say look down, the shower, you cunt." It's it's it sounds much much different. But that's also the Brit the British people they 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 use the word like it's not the same. Right. You know? Right. How's YouTube doing with us today? So far we've had we've had the the C word eleven times from Lily Tomlin's mouth uh, from uh uh David O. Russell's mouth uh, and then and then ours. All right, I don't know uh, what for- you're talking about. It's the K word. That's, that's, that's a word true. that means that's clown true. bounty. They're not saying the C word. Clown bounty in ancient times. In carny yes. times, yes. Yes. All right, a Florida man or Jersey guy. Uh, two headlines: one Florida man, one Jersey guy. Kevin will defend his uh, his nearly impeccable record at identifying assholes uh, in uh, above and below the Mason Dixon line. Um, 
Uh, first headline is, man who meant no harm, end quote, could get 20 years for pointing a laser at a jet. And man attempts to use women's underwear to comply with mask policy. So first one, man who, quote, meant no harm, end quote, sure, gets that, 20. That, that's a Jersey guy. And then the underwear is a Florida cat. I don't know how you do it every week, but you do. I really don't show these to him every week, but there's something happening here. You're absolutely correct. Because uh, the Florida guy would have blinded himself with the light. <laughs> David Banach, 38 years old of Parsippany, admitted under questioning that he aimed a handheld laser pointer at a jet and later a helicopter. Um, uh, he temporarily blinded the two pilots and uh, endangered the safety of countless innocent civilians. He was uh, released on a $100,000 bond, and uh, not a good thing to do. So we are telling everyone, please uh, do not do this. And then down in our uh, our fair state, Kevin's state, represented. Is that DeSantis? By B- No, he was doing Channel 2 News. Uh, in Fort Lauderdale, a man said he was kicked off a United Airlines flight for using women's underwear as a face mask. Adam Jenny of Cape Coral. Uh, told uh, WFTX he believes the rule requiring to wear a face mask on a plane is silly, so he opted to follow the rule by putting some panties on his face. Very good. Nice. You, you're, uh, I don't know, you got, a, you got a special thing going on here. You got a special, uh, a special gift. Well, number one, I do live in Florida, so I mean, it's, I, I, I play hopscotch with these knuckleheads 24-7 down here. Yeah, a little bit. Some, some panty masks at the gym earlier today, maybe? Oh, jeez. Hmm. You know what I want to talk? Let's not talk panties. I want to talk workouts with you. I want to talk workouts. I want to talk about building a workout. I am not a bodybuilder. I was. I know you're shocked. I was not a professional wrestler, uh, boxer, anything. So, listen, when I have to develop a workout, I need help. I email Shane Douglas. Um, or now, thank goodness, the app right on my phone called FitBod will help me, okay? It shouldn't take a ton of research for me to figure out what to do, okay? Uh, it shouldn't be challenging for me. It should be laid out. I should put in what I'm going to do, what my goal is. It should track me, give me the advice, stop guessing, start working out. That's exactly what is happening with FitBot, okay? Creates a workout routine that that adapts as you improve, uses the equipment you already have. You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff, okay? You can reach the next level without burning through free time or cash, all right? You can get started and stick to a program. Those are two of the biggest obstacles, getting started and then sticking to it. But if you have this little friend here, FitBod, helping you, it's so much easier. I can tell you firsthand. Um, I want to tell everyone here, whether you've been missing the gym or maybe you've hit a plateau, you're just kind of not getting to that next level, this fresh start has never been easier, okay? It switches up your exercise to avoid overtraining and burnout, and your program changes uh, based on your own personal progress. For Maximize Trust, I love the tracking of my progress. Makes you feel good. And a full year of FitBod, less than a single session with a personal trainer. That's mind-blowing to me. And on top of that... Kevin's making sure that you get 25% off your subscription. Try the app for free. Okay, go to the link uh, at uh, uh, in either in the description if you're listening to us or if you're watching, go to fitbod.me slash K-L-I-Q, click. Okay, that's fitbod.me slash click. And you get 25% off that subscription and start your work at your revolutionary work out progress process today it's like having a personal trainer for god's sakes in your pocket fit bod and no better naked that's what it's all about isn't it better naked. That's, it. that's it man i mentioned larry bird before larry bird to me as a celtics fan i always kind of i never felt The game was out of reach. I felt there was a superhero on the court who at any time could rescue me if I was in danger. 
if Chuck Person was hitting those threes or Reggie Miller was dropping some threes, draining some from the line, I knew it was okay because the Birdman was on the court. And if, if they could keep it close, those last 90 seconds of the game would be owned by Bird and we would win. It was a feeling of, of look at him, he's blowing right by, I, I think that's probably uh, Patrick Ewing. Look at him. He's like, where did he go? He's looking down between his knees. How about that impression? <laughs> looking down between his legs. Where is Larry? He's blown by him. I think that's Kersey. 30, uh, I look like a Knicks uniform. 33? No, it's, it, it's, 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 a, it's a trailblazer. All right. Well, whoever it is, Larry's. I'm just saying. Larry's holding his jock. I don't know who 33 was. Was that Drexler? On, uh, on the, oh, it looked like a Knicks uniform, though. No, Drexler was 34, I think. Go back, look at it. Let's see. Yeah, the guy's got a, he's got a, a Portland Trailblazers emblem on his pant. Oh, I see it. Yes, you're right. I see, I do see it. 30, okay, 30, 32 for Portland. No, Circa. He's 33. Anyway. I think it's a, I think it's Lily Tomlin. There would have been a f there would have been a script flying at her head if it were. Should I just put my feet upon the desk? That's that's right up there with Hopkins. So the I, for so for basketball that that's who that's who it was for me. Now when I was a kid when I was a, a young kid, it was Roger Staubach for the Cowboys. Okay, I always felt the comeback was possible. Who were your heroes? Doesn't have to be sports. Who were your heroes? Who did you feel was invincible, either in the boxing ring or on the court? God, when I was a kid, I think when I was a kid, I, I think Al K line was like Mister Tiger. Like you know, Al K line was the guy that would always get the. But we had we had an incredible pinch hitter named Gates Brow that played for the Tigers, hmm. and um, the Gator man he would always come through. He'd always come through with that that pinch hit that would, you know. My my dad would never leave a game because it'd be like, yeah, I remember that one time we left the East Brown a double. Right. He'll never, it's like uh, it was always was possible. There. My dad was always, you know, set the fuck down. That people be getting up, you know, Tigers and Tigers down eleven runs. <laughs> there and he he's, is. He's there's worried. The, that there's the gator. Gates Brown looks a little like like Byron Gumble, uh, uh, Brian Gumble. See the the, the 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 I mean we had Gordy Howe. We had right. uh, we had Dave Bing. Who did uh, you want? Who did you look up to in? Who did you want to emulate in basketball? Um, uh, my my favorite player was was uh was Jabbar. Mm-hmm. And then from that, like from that era, like I, I was a huge UCLA fan growing up. So then from that era, the next one was Walton. You know, Walt that Walt was was amazing. And then, uh, Pistol Pete Maravich. Nah. Yeah. I mean, I, I I was a center, so I was always. Oh, was, that's true. Uh, you know, with the big guys. Like we had, like we, like the Pistons had Bob Lanier. He was a stud from St. Bonaventure. Was um was Lambeer uh, a center? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You you I played you, against, I played, I played against him. Oh, college. that's right. You told me that. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't like him though, right? This wasn't anyone you wanted to emulate, right? Nobody wants to be a goofy white dude. Now I have trivia for you. Bill Lambeer was on a was played. God, I'm gonna blow this. Steve, get on it. Played a creature on a on a kids show. A, a slee stack. What was the show with the slee stacks? Um, was that it was, just, it was on the same it was like show? A Sid and Marty Croft deal. It was just, it was on the Banana Splits time, time uh, something beyond time or Land of the Lost. Land of the Lost. And now Lambier's in college, I think, at the time. And I guess because of his height, or just because he's an asshole, and the, the slee stacks are no, assholes. The, no, the slee stacks were tall. Yeah. So he, somebody told me that. I thought they were full of shit. I was like, yeah, they were playing college ball. What's he doing going to the, the local uh, PBS station 
to be a slee stack. There it is. 1974. Four goddamn episodes. I'm assuming he was in college in 74. It would have been around there. 74. I think we played him in 70. I don't know. He might. He might. If anything, he was a freshman. Okay. Born in 57. Yeah, so he's two years. He's two years. Yeah. He's two so years. he was, uh, what, 17? Yeah. Oh, so maybe he was in high school. He was. He had to be in come high out, school. Come out of high school. Unbelievable. What about, you know, people come up to you, right? I'm sure at the signings, they come up to you with their fake belts and they tell you that you were a hero to them. Is it weird? Are you like, I shouldn't be a hero? I mean, I just, I think that, um, like we were, we were talking about, we, we talked about sports guys, but like when I was a little kid, like, like Adam West was like, he was God. Right. Oh yeah. You your know? heroes could have been actors or, or yeah, Bat, yeah, like sure. Bat, Batman and Superman and. Like I even liked Astro Boy, who was a, like a, a a Japanese anime that was early, early, early uh, anime that came over, and it was a, a professor whose uh, kid was killed, and he made him into this robotic animated uh, like Astro Boy. Mm, right. Do we got a picture of Astro Boy anywhere? I'm sure they're working on it. I've got I've got a, I, I've got a T-shirt that is. So worn out that, uh, but uh, Astro Boy was was my, when my when my son was really young, I went out and and, and went to a a Comic Con, and I was signing. There he is, I was signing, and um, I found a bunch of Astro Boy uh, DVDs because they started they were black and white, and then eventually they be, they became color, and. Um, so he kind of got hooked on it, and then I went to a uh, like a a toy place, and they had an Astro Boy that flew around your uh, ceiling fan. Oh, so, so, so in that so, pose, yeah. So at yeah. nighttime, he would turn that on, and that little Astro Boy would fly around his his bed. Kev, I can see the future, and future Nash next Monday is watching this episode, and he's mad that you're leaning away from the mic. Am I am I doing so it? Am I, am I doing it again? He's gonna so he's gonna t- he's gonna tell past Nash to yeah. There it is. That is yeah. that the toy right there. That might be it. Now, did you in your signings and comic cons and all that stuff? Did you meet someone a, a hero or just some a hero, someone you admired, whatever, and? You're cautious because you don't want to blow that admiration you have from them, and then they start behaving like Lily Tomlin on the set, and and you're and you're like, God damn, I love that guy or that girl, and what a dick they are. You ever trepidatious to meet people that you admired? No. Never had bad experiences. No, I just I I, I think we were in it was Madison, Wisconsin, and um. It was a it was a Comic Con, and it was at the arena where the uh, the Badgers play. No, it wasn't. It was across the street from where the Badgers play, and Henry Winkler was there. Mm. You know, it's the Fonz, and it was so funny because he was. You know, I came up and we, we you know we took a picture together, and you know I, I rarely mark out, but I thought that like he was you know he was he was pretty cool, and he was cool to me. We had a great time, but the one of the handlers didn't know who he was when he went back for the, the pro photo ops. And she said, sir, you can't be back here, you know, to him. Cause he's, mm. he's like, and, and she, she had no, no idea, had no idea who he was. Ugh. And he didn't go off. Didn't say anything. He just left. No. He went home. Because uh, nobody, like, nobody corrected it. Like, nobody that was there went, like, they just let it go. And it was just like, and he he was such a class act that he wasn't going to make a stink. 
But I, I, I know that like that when, when people treat you like that, you just right. say to yourself, like, I'm not going to lower myself. So I, I'll just go home. I'll just. Hmm. Wow. That's really disappointing. Actually. Yeah. I love the Fonz as a kid. I guess I, I could say one of my first heroes was the Fonz. Yeah. Fonz and then you see cool. Henry Winkler. He's like the most unfonz guy as, as Henry Winkler. Anyway. But he's great. And um, what's the one he's on now? Oh, God. Barry. Barry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's great in that. Um, when, um, who, who have you yet to meet that you were a fan of or idolized or Doug that you, you haven't met that you'd like to? Well, Kareem's still alive, so you could. No, I've got a picture of being Kareem. Oh, you do already. See, you've, you've done it yeah. all. Yeah, I've got There's nothing left. Kareem. Tony Katane, check her off the list. Kareem. I would not uh, have to have wine with Kareem though. I'm, I'd see, Sean, Sean Connery's past. He would yeah. have been he would have been one. You know, sometimes you gotta slap a bitch. Get my good one. You ever see that interview? Nash, you might have the height, but I get the weight. You ever you ever, you ever seen that interview where, where Sean Connery says it's, it's all right to give him a smack every once in a while? Oh no, he's going to be on the uh, stiff one of the week now. If now that I oh this. yeah, you got to look it up. You got to look up Sean Connery. You tell you, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got to give him one. Not not it's, not a, not a closed hand now. You know, just oh, he'd be instantly canceled today. Let me tell you something about the stars of, of old, though. Here's the difference between the movie stars of the seventies. And today, the element of danger. Nobody thinks that any of the male movie stars today could kick their ass. Nobody. None of today's movie stars are kicking anyone's ass. Maybe Clooney could knock out David or Russell. But go back. Look at guys like Steve McQueen, Burt Reynolds, that era. There was an element of danger to being a male movie star back then. One of my favorite lines ever, we're, we're, we're smoking a joint, driving down the road, hadn't, hadn't said a word to each other probably in about 35 minutes. And uh, Rude's to my right, I'm driving. And I don't know where Rude goes. Remember when you were a kid, man, you thought that Beretta had some good jacks on him, that he had some arms? And I said, yeah. He, and he goes, yeah. I used to think, like, you knew that Beretta could probably go, right? And I'm like, yeah. And that was it. It was Robert Conrad, right? No, was who it was Beretta? No, no, Beretta was. Uh, Robert Blake. Yeah, Robert Blake. Right. Robert Blake. Yeah. Remember Robert Blake's cameo in that, that David Lynch movie? Pull a still up of this. It's from uh, Lost Highway, I think, or Mulholland Drive. No, Lost Highway. Robert Blake, who's, who's off camera for years, and then comes back as this creepy-ass figure. It was one of those, like, Travolta moments, I call them. Like when, uh, yeah. There. I remember that. Tremendous. But to the point. Now, what, did, yeah. he get, did he shoot? Didn't he shoot his, his wife? Or? Yeah, it was a bit of an issue, I think, he had there. Did he, but did he get out of it? Didn't he? Um, I, I, I don't think that, uh, that he did time for that. I think there was a, uh, um, I, I don't want to speculate. I don't want to speculate, but I, I don't think he went to jail, but I know there was, there was a bit of an issue, uh, like in the, in the attempt, like in the murder, uh, department there. Some, you know, yeah. some problems like, uh, you know, the, what's his name? Phil Spector had some issues. Yeah. Had that's coming, that's coming up pretty soon on, on HBO or yeah, one of those. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, but uh, not to be outdone by your doll's hair. Don't worry about it. You're that's you're. you're oh no, Phil Spector. <laughs> Phil Spector's on a, that's that's on a whole that's a, on a whole different uh, Aquanet uh, spectrum. But the guys in the seventies, even before that, there was an Clint Eastwood was a badass. Yes, yes, and you had to be. Yeah. Or else you were you were Donald O'Connor. But even you, if you go dancing back, dancing in like, films, it'd be like Burt Lancaster, like John Wayne, Robert Mitchum. Guys, guys, right? Right. You know, 
Who who today? Sean Penn, maybe. You could give Sean Penn that today. Yeah, but Sean Penn's like five three. Oh, but I don't think it's the the height that matters. It's it's what comes across on camera. You just have a sense that that they would fuck you up. And and I think that was important back then. Now it's not. Now now they have to be um quite the opposite. They have to be very sensitive. Very sensitive and approachable, I think, now is the uh I had a I had such a, a a testy exchange. What is this? Popularity. Okay, you're gonna have to zoom in here because I can't read anything. All right, here are the top actors. We're saying the, the Star Meter has ranked these as the top film actors. Okay, here's the Man of Steel. Does he look like the Man of Steel? No, no, he looks like he's on Kensington in Philly. Look at okay, Aaron Carter. Right, put him right up against. Did, Steve didn't McQueen. he just pass away? Which is him or the brother? Uh, no, it was Aaron Carter, right? He was he was the one. Uh, yeah, he just passed yeah, away. Yeah, his brother. Uh, who's his brother? Uh, the singer, Nick. Nick Carter. Yeah, right? got him. Brendan Fraser. Come on. Fucking nobody up. Okay. Uh, I, I don't even know who this is, but are you kidding me? Lu- Lu- Lewis Partridge. Uh, okay. Dominic West. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, give him a shot in the ring, maybe. But just proving my point. Ryan, Ryan Hurst, he's, he's, a big, he's kind of a big boy. Yeah, but he's kind of a, he's not a leading man type. He's like the Sons of Anarchy, and that's, that's, a, that's a niche. He's in that niche. Where are, they niche. Getting these, where are they getting these guys at? These are the top actors today, Kevin. Star Meter, top-ranked actors in the world today. No, that's not. He, I, Henry I, K, K, Cahill, Cavill, for Christ's <laughs> sake. He's uh, the, the, the Witcher. He just got actually. He just gave that role to uh, Helmsworth, the other Liam Helmsworth. Come on, Brando, Liam's, Brando, uh, James Caan. God damn it! You have to have your testicles cut off when you get to LA. They do it right at the airport. They say, Excuse, sir, do you have a headshot? Yes. Uh, please drop your trousers and they clip your balls right there. It's over. Yeah, what's well, a different era? You got you got to be woke, man. You got to be, you know. I'm not saying you have to do anything bad to anybody. I'm saying that the element of danger was attractive in a man, and you know now you need ballet slippers. Um, back to our hero, now, Sean Penn. I'll say because I mentioned him a minute. He, as a young actor, he was a hero of mine. I thought that he was. Uh, I just saw him in something the other day that wasn't bad, like Twenty One Guns or something like that. It was on Netflix. Well, the work he never does is bad. The films may be bad, but I just thought he was one of those actors that was able to to do what... I mean, he's a guy who could have taken the route of movie star, but he took the route of actor. He to- chose challenging roles, maybe in small films, did not focus on box office, focused on the craft, challenging himself, changing himself, that chameleon-like, that chameleon-like quality. I mean, that's why you want to be an actor, right? To be able to be anything. I remember one time I was talking to my manager. and uh, when I was a young actor, 20s, maybe 30. And she was talking about type. I said, Libby, I, I said, if, if I get a call to play a Jewish mother, I, w- I, would, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't consider that odd because I should be able to do everything. She was like, oh, you're ridiculous. You have to. And that's the Hollywood, the 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 the, the actors' me- and mentality. Most times, so you have to fit the type. You got to play the type. You got to. But Sean Penn could play anything, and and that's what well, I admired. One of my favorite scenes of Sean Penn is at close range. Great film, and unbelievable with, film with Walken. And when he when he, he sticks the gun to Walken's head, you know, he confronts him. And, yeah, yeah, and and the and the and the you know, I mean that's just, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a great film. Sean, when you point the gun at my head, you should step closer <laughs> and look me in the eye if you want. So, yeah, those two guys, uh, great, yeah. great actors, uh, great film, such an underrated film. No one today knows that film. If you're our age, you probably know no. it. But yeah. it, was so, it was light on dialogue. It was very atmospheric. And uh, all the, his brother's in it, right? Uh, Chris yeah. Penn's in that, I Chris believe. Is, Chris Penn plays his brother. God, right, unbel- right. Uh, unbelievable casting. Right. Well, but they he did a great job. Another one, gone too soon. Yeah. Kaitel. Where's Kaitel? 
Wait, waiting to be a cleaner in another movie. You couldn't, you couldn't trip over a film in the '90s without Keitel and his cock always uh, uh, featured, uh, usually. Um, well, remember there was there was a period where um, Michael Caine and Jude Law were in every film that came out for like t- ten years. It was just like, oh, and they're in it. Kane's the greatest. Someone was talking. He has he had an acting book out, acting in in film, which is pretty good. He did a, a video for it as well. He was the one that taught me you pick one eye when it's your close up, and you're doing the tu- you're doing the turnaround. It's your close up. You pick one eye on your uh, the person you're talking to. Because if, if, if you look at both, you'll forth. cross you'll go cross eyed. Well, you bounce back and forth, and it and don't blink for the close up. He said it weakens you as a character. Brilliant. Um. But he also, at one point, they were talking to him later, later in his, his career, and they were saying they, some film student type gets up and starts talking, how do you choose the roles? Do you first look at the script in its entirety? Do you look at the challenge of the character? And he said, I look at weird films somewhere I've not been to. I take the film. And that's tremendous. When you get to a certain point, you're like, Galapagos he, Islands? Did he, ever, did he ever get, did, did he get, ever get an Oscar? I Michael Caine. Did he get anything for Clute? I don't follow awards, man. You know that's so bogus, man. Did he? Did he get anything for? Maybe I'm thinking for some reason Clute comes to mind, but maybe I'm wrong. Harvey Keitel's that- 389th on the meter, by the way. I just want to point. How about you, act actors? Growing, uh, you talked about uh, um, uh, Batman. What's his name? Uh, Adam West. Adam West. Um. But now, you know, that you're working in film, you, you have the chance to run into some of these guys and work with them. Who would you like to work with as an actor that you were a fan of? Well, at this point right now, I'd love to be directed by, by Eastwood. I thought you were going to say David O. Russell for a minute. No, Eastwood. Um, I mean, Clooney, Brad Pitt. Um, I mean, I've been blessed. I've worked with some 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 really good actors. Mm-hmm. Um, How about women? I'd love to do something with Meryl Streep because you know it's going to be good. Mm-hmm. She, I mean, she doesn't she doesn't do a bad film. Um, always was an Ann Archer fan. Oh. Yeah, oh, I haven't seen Sharon. her in a long time. Yeah, Sharon Stone. What was Anne Archer's big? She was the... Uh, in a thriller. There was a thriller. Well, she was the one uh, with the... Uh, oh, the... Glenn Close. Um, not Fatal Attraction. Yeah. Fatal Attraction? Yeah. So she, they was she the, the, she was the wife? She was the wife. Okay. There they are. God, that scared the fuck out of every guy on earth. I was too young, but it taught me a few things. A cautionary tale for as I got older. Wow. The that term bunny the, boiler. Uh, born that, was, that, 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 was, that was one of those ones when you went to the movie with your wife, and it's like, uh, sweetheart, the screen's up there. <laughs> Quit looking at the side of my head. Excellent. What, do you think you're just going to fuck me? Like, <laughs> Demi Demi Moore in that Disclosure movie, that's another one, man. She's pretty psycho. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and, and no Michael guy, Douglas, right? And no guy's turning that down. Demi Moore. Oh, turning down it, that action, you mean, yeah. Yeah, that's almost impossible. And But he does, I mean, he, you know, he, yeah. She seduced me. Yeah. That was another one. That interesting, uh, interesting flip on the yes. sexual harassment in the workplace uh, yep. situation. Okay, so now, um, uh, as someone you were surprised who came up to you and was a fan of yours, uh, an actor, athlete, who you were excited to meet, and they turn and go, "Damn, Kev, I love, I loved your shit. I loved you as the Russian." I remember when I met Jake LaMotta, he knew who I was. Really? I thought that was cool. 
Yeah. Did you ever meet Chuck Wepner? He's my neighbor, Ian. No. Yeah. Okay. His license plate says champ. Drives by my as, as it should. <laughs> um Every, every everybody's nice to me and it's in my face but who but i know but who 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 genuinely you think was a fan that followed you as as a wrestler well we were talking well, you about you told I, me t- t- uh, what's his name um the dancer magic mike channing Chinese, but yeah, but Jan, well, he was. I mean, when he was they, a kid, well, they were, yeah, yeah, he liked me when I was a wrestler. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, when, yeah, yeah. No, like mind blowing shit. Like uh, Magic Johnson uh, runs across the room and goes, "Yo, Kev." Another well, we, good I, 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 pl- I played, I played with him against the Russians. I, I went to basketball camp with Magic it, when he was in college. No, when we were in high school. Oh, oh, he's he's from Lansing, right? Yeah. Oh, I forgot he was a Michigan guy. He was he was Player of the Year. Yeah. And I was number two. Look at you now. You you got uh, him. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, got that, him. Yeah that 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 one, that one white supremacist uh, cast his vote. <laughs> yeah, cast his vote from 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 Wald Lake. I like the white kid. How t- was he six nine? He's around your height, right? Yeah, he's six nine. Yeah, there's a great picture on my Instagram of me, him, and Scott. I'll have to look for that. See, that's great. Yeah, there's a great oh, picture. That's... It's from a pediatric AIDS thing, and it was one of those deals where he gets up and we're in New York City, and he says, "Man," he goes, "Say, I saw one of my, I saw an old friend tonight, man. It was unbelievable." He says, "Man." It, 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 they call him Diesel, but I, I knew him as Kevin. You know, we, we played ball together, man. Boy, we made you play. And all the guys at my table are like, yeah, you got creds right there, baby. I, I was like, wow, Magic's putting me over. And it was his pediatric age thing, you know, so. And, like, we had, like, uh, Naomi Campbell, Linda Evangelist. There we are. So. So he remembered you from that tournament? Dude, we played. We went to basketball camp every summer together. We were oh, ro- okay. we we're roommates. Like we, it was, it, we, it, like every other kid it, it, it is it, that's there is paying. He's not paying. I'm not paying. Jay Vincent's not paying. Like it's like it's the University of Michigan is basically using a week a week to recruit us. Everybody else is checking in. They're driving us around campus. Wow. So I didn't know you know. So get him on the fucking show. What are we doing, Joey Diaz? We have Magic on here for God's sakes. No, I mean, Magic don't want to be there. Magic don't want to do this shit. Sure he does. Um, <laughs> he uh, uh, that that's uh, that's something. He um, when he goes on to uh, let's see, he graduates in seventy nine. No, he doesn't graduate. He goes in as a he goes in as a sophomore, doesn't he? Yeah. To the NBA, I think. Seventy nine. And um, they win the they win the they, and yes, they win it that year. That's right. They beat Indiana State. Uh, uh, I'm Burke. talking. I'm talking about the. Then he goes into the NBA. Kareem gets hurt. Magic plays center and scores 42. I know that. And the and the Lakers win Magic's uh, rookie rookie year. I didn't know that. Yeah. Ox Baker did it. That's all you got, and 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 the rest is history. Yeah, magic. Magic was so good. So, the the counselors uh, that were playing against. So it was like the the counselors versus the campers all star game. John, Johnny Orr's uh, basketball camp, University of Michigan, and the Michigan team was the runner-up national championship team to the undefeated um indiana uh, indiana team the last the last team to be undefeated to win a national championship mm. i'm pretty i'm pretty sure it was scott may uh abernathy kent benson quinn buckner uh, who was the other kid it was a somebody else but but um so Ricky Green was probably the fastest guy to ever play 
and uh, in the NBA. Just foots unbelievable. He played, he played for Michigan, and he was six six two, six three. But but like you know, first round draft choice. I think he went to Golden State, and Magic was a going to be. A, was he going to be a junior? Is he the good? I know that Magic was like me. Like we were both sixteen going into our senior year, hmm. and he, like Ricky Green, couldn't do anything with Magic. Magic just would would and same with the Russians. The Russians with the the junior national Russians team. We uh, we were we were cut off at eighteen by AAU. They could be twenty one. Oh wow! And and, the, and yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, and and the Russian guys did, couldn't do anything with them. They just, I mean, they couldn't do any because he he just he would On back offense, him. Down. He was he was unstoppable. Yeah, he, he they couldn't do anything with him. And, and his he, all you had to do was stand on the block and put your hands up, and he would he would he would put the ball right right in your hand. Right, Un- unbelievable. Yeah. And like an and like an asshole, I don't go to Michigan State. Why? Well, I guess Kevin Nass thought it was just time to get out of Michigan and get out of that cold. Mm. So, I really wanted to go to University of Detroit. So you would have been on that national championship team in se- yep. uh, seventy nine. Wow. Yep. Did um. You ever have a, like like a a guffaw? You ever have an embarrassing moment with someone that you uh, that was a hero of yours that you wanted to impress? Call them by the wrong name or spill a drink on their crotch or see? I'm not one of those people that even will even go up to somebody. Well, maybe just, you're working with. I just right assume now. not. Like I, if I see somebody. I remember one time I saw Powers Booth at some Italian restaurant in L.A. and I just looked over at him and I gave him a nod. Well, the two guys trying to get good Italian in L.A. The problem, you know, so, I had a I um, Robert Duvall directed uh, a film that I voiced called Assassination Tango, and <clears throat> he was great as a director. Obviously, he's an actor, so you you call him the actor's director and always wanted you whatever you were doing whatever take you were doing make it your own his voice work you know we're, we're filling in we're adding here he was always like but make it your own don't 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 take what i said uh exactly just you know i want you to make it your own so at one point he looks over to me and he's giving me direction and uh and he's uh and he goes yeah but you know no when you when you do it you know you gotta and he reaches down you can't see he goes like this let's crotch so I look down and I point. And I go, "Oh, okay." Now I'm, you know, I'm, what, I'm 25. So I'm like, "Oh, you mean like primal, primal, masculine, you know, from the balls?" So I look down. And I go, "Okay." And he looks at me. Goes, "Okay." He looks away, and I go, "No, that wasn't direction. He was scratching his balls, <laughs> and I just pointed to it. And for the rest of the day, I didn't speak to him. I hid. <laughs> I listened to my direction." I was unfortunately in the elevator with him out of the studio, but he was very nice. I, I, I guess he, I guess that happens to him all the time. People point to his, to his balls all the time, but you know, you're, you're giving someone direction. You're on the film. You may not want to be adjusting yourself at that moment. He always has reminded me of Steve Austin in 20 years. Like a, a, they kind of had that same kind of, I don't know. Like, yeah, I see. Well, he's, he, he has a ranch. He's a, uh, I think he's a, uh, I think he's a right winger, uh, from what I remember. Uh, but uh, but brilliant nonetheless. Just had itchy balls. Listen, he, he we, we finally we, we finally got that uh, Michael Caine won for Hannah and his and his sisters. Oh my, Hannah and, and her sisters. sisters! A great a great Woody Allen film. Yeah, eighty six. I don't know that I would have given him an Oscar for it, but hey, nothing, you know. Props. Hey, when you, when you put out three hundred and twenty four films in two years, you're going to get one of them. You got it. Yeah, you're, I mean, it's just like you know, if, if you if, if you would have bought a billion lottery tickets, I'm sure that would have you would have got some kind of a payoff on the two billion. Oh, Kev, listen, you know, you, you you might you might be uncertain about yourself after pointing to Robert Duvall's crotch, 
But making your Thanksgiving turkey this year is not going to fill you with insecurity, and it's because of what I have in my uh. hand here. Okay, you can see my shirt, Meter, M-E-A-T-E-R, for those of you listening at home. And uh, the holidays are here, okay? We're going to stuff our faces, eat like there's no tomorrow, and uh, we're going to get the best sales of the year on that exciting weekend. But the coolest product to cook your meats is also going to make the perfect gift for you, okay? I'm talking about Meter. It's a really slick, smart meat thermometer. I'm going to show you this here. It looks, it's, it looks like it could be a, a round. One of Kevin's uh, AR-15 or something. But this is it. This is a thermometer, okay? And this heavy-duty thermometer tracks the temperature of your meat and lets you know when it's ready to come out of the oven or off the grill. You can use it on the grill. So you would just insert it into your meat up to the line, put it in, and that's it. You turn on your app. This is all driven off of the meter app. And um, you will never undercook or overcook cook that juicy prime rib or roast chicken. The app even estimates how long your cook's gonna be and it gives you a countdown time-wise. So you have a meter on the app, which is the temperature of the meat, and it's correlating to a time countdown. So it's doing it together, okay? This is science at work here for you to make it uh, make it your time in the kitchen or at the grill, uh, okay? You could just kick back, spend time with the family. You don't have to keep opening the grill, opening the oven. It's right there on the app. You know what temperature it is. It's perfect. Smokers also, not you, but the smoker gimmick, okay? I know a lot of you like air frying. You can use this for air frying as well. It's super simple, super easy, and you get the perfect, consistent results. And you can be real cool like me, walk around with a meter t-shirt, for Christ's sake. Um, Monitor that prime rib, chicken, smoked pork, shoulder, all in the app. And then you can do other things. Not have to constantly stand there and check on the food. It comes with this cloud service. You have limitless range. Okay? I had one before this. You, you had to stick it in the meat in the grill. You left these antenna out. You got too far from it. There was a, a, a receiver. This is two things you're using. You're using this thermometer here. And you're opening the app on your phone. And it's all done for a limited time shop meters biggest sale of the year and get 20 percent off just go to meter m-e-a-t-e-r dot com and save on the best meat thermometer out there take care of your holiday shopping now and shop for that chef in your life especially if that chef is you okay meter i love it i've used it and it is great to be foolproof every time oh wait i wonder why um like, how many times have you went to, like, a really high, high-end steakhouse and you get the porterhouse for two? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like a, it's like a, a $70, you know, piece of meat. 30 ounces. There's no way you can eyeball the thing. Right. And I, and I like, I like rare meat, meat rare. I like, I, Me I, too. I don't, you know, that's how I like my steak. Me too. And so I went, I went to this new place. I, I get it, and I'm I'm looking at, at at the outside of this porterhouse, and you know when it's been overcooked, it kind of has that gray tinge to it, <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm like, and the, and the lady, she she goes, would you like to cut into that and check it? I'm like, no, I, I don't even need to. It's overdone, and she just looks at me. I said, all right, for here, I I just cut it in half. I looked at it, said. I said that's medium, mm -hmm. if I'm being kind, right? And I then I explained to her about the meter. I said like I I don't understand if you've got these like you could have three of these. Each cook could have one. You guys wouldn't mess up one steak. Like why why don't it's you guys can't eye you can't eyeball something this thick. Especially at the at the high end houses, that that sh they should have that down to a science. That's you their freaking business. That's their bread and butter. You would or their steak. I had oh, I had an amazing. Hey, do you ever go to Bull and Bear in uh in Orlando? It's no, in the, you, you, I, I, the Waldorf. I don't I don't go to. I, I, I'm not to be a dick or anything, but I I just I can't go. I can't go to a NASCAR race. I can't go. It's a restaurant. Kevin. To a, yeah, but. 
you're still you're you're on the property. It's, it's on little... the Waldorf. You're like off the property. Anyway, there it is. So uh, yeah. So and what's and what's the uh, markup on that? What's well, the what's the Disney markup the, on that steak? The the bill is <laughs> for me. I had we had the kids with us. Me and my brother in law and his wife, my wife and the kids. It was twelve hundred dollars. But how many bottles of wine? None. None. I had twelve hundred dollars. They had on the special menu. They had a um. You see the tomahawk for two there, the one eighty. Yeah. They had a wagyu tomahawk for two for two twenty five. I nailed that bitch. Ridiculous. See, so so I'm having that, and then I'm gonna have a couple bottles of of, of Camus, which is uh, which is gonna be three and a quarter a bottle. So it's just like. You know, it's a, yeah, once in a, I, once I, in a while. I, I, yeah, I could, buy, I, I could buy, I could buy, I could buy a a a a, a K car with forty thousand miles cheaper than I can get out of that fucking restaurant. Yeah, no, I know. I have my old fashioned. My wife drinks wine. I, I drink a, a scotch or an old fashioned. This show is sponsored by Better Help. And I am always happy to talk about this product every week, this app, the service. Um, it's all that rolled into one. Um, there is, there's nobody I know who couldn't have benefited at some time in their life when they're searching for answers um, to get the help of a licensed professional to talk to. It's talking, okay, working through things. And, uh, you know, guys, life does not come with a user manual, you know. So when it's not working, totally normal to feel stuck. Um, even uh, mundane things, work issues, it doesn't have to be something tragic, though certainly um, they're there at better help uh, to help you with all that. Okay, therapists are trained to help you figure out cause of all these challenging emotions, learn productive coping skills, strategies really is, is, is what it's all about. It's the closest thing to the guided tour of the uh, complex engine called you. Um, BetterHelp thus far has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. Okay, it's convenient, secure, it's accessible anywhere, and it's 100% online. Okay, whether, you know, whether you've ever been to therapy personally or not, maybe you know somebody to suggest it to, keep BetterHelp an option. Okay, everyone deserves to feel their best. Okay, and BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. All right. Uh, it's got all the benefits of in-person therapy, but it's convenient, it's accessible, and more affordable. You're going to fill out a brief questionnaire. That's how they're going to get to know you, and they're going to match you with a therapist, okay? They can talk about what you want to talk about. It doesn't have to be the biggest issue in the world. If things are just not clicking, you're stuck, um, you, can, uh, you can make this work for you. You can even switch therapists, okay? If you, you get matched to them, and uh, you can switch. You have the freedom here, and that's what it's all about. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right person to talk to. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more, okay? And you're going to save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash click, K-L-I-Q. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash K-L-I-Q. And Kev, uh, if you make the call, you'll let us know how your better help experience goes. I will do. Ask Nash. Hashtag Ask Nash. We give you access to Kevin. If you want in person, not in person, but live access, don't forget about December 6th. Nine, I'm turning into Mean Gene all of a sudden, folks. December 6th, 9 p.m. Adfreeshows.com. Sign up, subscribe, become a top guy, and get to talk to Kev after he covers his match with Goldberg. Let's head to the hashtag Ask Nash segment now. Jack says, what's Kevin's go-to wristwatch? I see in the YouTube thumbnail he wears one. Does he have any favorite brands? My wife bought me a Breitling uh, Bentley on my 50th birthday, and I, I'm very partial to that. My son, uh, I think my, my wife or somebody bought me a, there's a, a, a brand of, uh, of watches made in Detroit called Shinola. 
And um, I think I don't my know wife, shit from Shinola is that yeah uh, yeah that's local. yeah it's a, yeah so it's it's, a, it's a, and that was and T wore that watch, so and it was a leather band, so that's that's now in my uh, in my rotation. I mean, I've got Rolexes, I've got tags, I've got you know, I mean, I've. You know the market just, for Rolex is right now is so inflated. If you wanted to unload oh, you can't find an investment, them. you can't. You, can, you can't find them. They're paying ridiculous amounts, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars for a Rolex, which five yeah. years ago would have been ten grand. Yeah. So no, I, I yeah, it's that's but I'm not I'm I I mean I I don't have a watch on, you know. Like I don't wear um I don't wear jewelry. Well, the cock ring you have, but other other than that, uh, no, really, I, I I I just am not a jewelry guy. Well, most guys can. I don't know, what can you wear a ring and necklace? Maybe with the watch, that's like the standard. The one I do that because the, the only reason I do that is when I go check into a, you know, a four or five star hotel, you know. It, but before you can throw the the the, the, the platinum card at them, you, you at least they have an idea that you know. You've got some cash because you got a, you got a nice, as Steve and I call it, a biscuit. Uh, oh, I guess we call it the me, me and me and Austin always call it a. What, what, what kind of biscuit you wearing there? I'm gonna steal that. Uh, the other guy says, since we know you're a big fan of the movie Legends of the Fall, with your Oscar-worthy version of Anthony Hopkins' character stroked out. Fuck him. Uh, did you name your son after Brad Pitt's character, Tristan? Yes. Ah. Yes, we did. Was that ever revealed before, or is this a first right now? I, I mean, I've, I've never kept it a secret. I mean, we've been talking about the film a lot. I don't remember if, if uh, I don't Tristan know. or you mentioned that when we were doing the, uh, the thing. I mean, T knew it. Okay. I mean, if you ever, I mean, if, 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 there, was, if there was ever a more handsome gentleman in, in a film than uh, Brad Pitt as Tristan with the long hair, you know, when he's when he comes back and he's coming across the uh, the tundra on that horse. It's flowing. The hair is flowing yeah. in the wind, is it not? So I, I had a feeling my, my I would have a, a handsome Chad, you know, chap coming coming along. So this is the hair episode. I'm I'm starting to think. We're talking about Tony Katane's mane. We're talking about Brad's. We talked about a full pelt before. This is this is I'm seeing a theme here. Well, we we we, we touched with our uh, be my little baby, Ronnie Spector. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Phil. Yeah, <laughs> David Upchurch. Don't have a question, but a statement. It's just so ironic that T was the one who got you to start the podcast. And talking about T throughout the podcast, he started is what will get you through this time. It's almost like he knew, like Dad, you're gonna need this. I need something, that's for fucking sure. Hmm. You never predict what's going to get. Uh, dangerous Rhythm. Uh, dangerous Rhythm with DJ Vil Vodka. That means loving Tristan's band, The Builders. Um, I hear a lot of Husker do. Uh, Sugar, Bob Mould in his music. Did Tristan ever meet Bob Mould? <clears throat> No, he did not, but he knew that Bob was a friend of mine. And he knew that I was, uh, he listened to, I had, uh, I had both Who's Could Do and, and Sugar, but then I also had uh, a lot of Bob's uh, solo stuff. And um, so he was, like, he was, he was into Bob before, like, it was, it was chill to be into Bob. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, like Pearl Jam and everybody else is coming out going, yeah, Bob Mould was a huge, you know, influence and so-and-so. And they just, you know, I just think the people just didn't realize how brilliant Bob was. Mm. And uh, Yeah, uh, the the earliest Who's Could Do stuff that, what would you call it, like post-punk? It wasn't punk necessarily, I don't think, like like the Ramones or, or Sex Pistols were, but it was definitely like born of that. And, yeah, uh, and I and I, but I think it's 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 so hard to 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 categorize. That's true too. 
you know that that music. What did I say? What was what was my what was my uh, last? Uh, I said the. Uh, what was it? Was it sound like a tag team? It was the Gettysville Address or something like that. A Gettysville Express. I think that's what I said last thing. So we said hmm. it so- sound like some old WCW uh, tag team. Yeah. So. Uh, Chris. Chris KS. I don't know if that means Chris from Kansas or just Chris KS. He says, hey, Big Kev, love the podcast. The Great Muda, one of my all-time favorite wrestlers, is soon to have his final match ever. I can't recall if you ever worked with him, so if you could please talk about that and also give your general opinion of him and his career. Well, Muda was part of the NWO, so I, I think that maybe we've had some some time. You know, me, uh, I worked with Muda my, out, in and out my whole career. The only time I ever worked for All Japan was in the ring with Muda. Really? Yeah, he was my, he was my tag team partner. Were you the Gettysville Express? We were the Gettysville Express, which a lot of people don't know it. Uh, but we were the Gettys Bill Express Son. So, Express Son. Express Son. There's a, there's a t-shirt <laughs> idea if we can get a little animated Kev and uh, and Muda. Uh, Nate Devlin, Sean. A few episodes ago, Kevin mentioned John Candy, and it sounded like he was about to go into a story about him and got sidetracked. What was the story? If there was one, were, were you going to tell a John? Yeah. Candy? So we we're, we're, were. He always showed up when we when we uh, worked the forum in L.A. and um, we got we came in early one time and it, it was like it was it was warm you know and over like by the back door in this like long coats this gentleman you know, and he's got his, his back to us you know it was kind of like. As, as we got out of our car, we got closer. He goes, hey, you guys mind if I walk in with you? And it was John Candy. Hmm. And he was, you know, he was a huge fan. And it was just like, I want to think Scott gave him his phone number. They, they, after that, it's like, it was like, he, you know, he was, you know. Did they talk after that? I, anytime we were in town, John was always at the shows. Wow, that's cool. I, remember I the, loved John Candy. Yeah, I remember one time, um, kid, kid was kid was um, Sean Waltman was opening opening match, and that's back when you could just like play anything you wanted to, and nobody would like. And he came, kid came out to Kung Fu fighting. Oh God, it was classic. Candy was a good actor too. Yeah. I don't think he ever tasked himself with a serious role, but there are moments, like in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, as silly and trite as maybe it was, there are those moments where, you know, because the big reveal at the end is he's like a homeless guy, but there are those hints throughout where you see that through the comedy. There's a little bit of Uncle those Buck. Sensitive, so, uh, I just don't remember it as well. Uncle, uh, Uncle yeah. Buck, there's, yeah, where he's he, he kind of – Comes in as the as a parental, yeah. Fig, you know, it, 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 yeah. He definitely had range. There was no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, he did. What a loss. He he. Mm, what a loss. Uh, Hispanic causing panic. I noticed Virgil getting some receipts from you after he busted your lip open in the 1994 Rumble Diesel spot. You eliminate him immediately after. My question is, after a receipt is given, does it end there, or do you mention it later also? I don't. You know, I mean, it's just, that's, you know, that's that's your, you, you, you give me a potato, I give you a receipt, and, you know, if anything, it, you know, anything after that, it's like, you shouldn't be, you know, and, and you know, it's, it's, if you ever watch it back, it's it's not one potato; it's the third. Oh, really? Okay, I yeah. Have to watch this it's like it's like jab, jab, then the thick. It's like like I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and and take six while you while you you gauge your your distance on me. Yeah, you know. So 
Nick Caldwell. Gentlemen, thank you both for the amazing weekly content. It makes my Mondays better without question. You guys tend to talk about music to some degree most weeks. It got me thinking, Kevin, what has been your favorite theme song of yours throughout your career? Was it the Diesel theme, NWO, Wolfpack, or one of your TNA themes? Also, do you have a favorite or two that anybody else used in the industry? I always liked Scott's Razor Ramon, that doo-doo, doo-doo, doo I always liked that. I always thought, I remember one time we were stoned. We went over to Tijuana. You? Yeah. Me and, me and Scott went over to Tijuana, and we went into a pharmacy, and neither one of us, we were both being tested for steroids. We were so stoned that we walked into a pharmacy and got the, these preloads of sesenon and like the, it's got like a you know like a three gauge needle it's like a a, a knitting needle and we we we, we so we we, we we he jacks me with with, with in in the alley i jack him you know we we go back over and um we're sitting there in the uh with the at the marriott by the by the lax and um like we're super stoned, and I look at him. I'm like, "Dude, I think you're growing." He goes, "I am." He, we were, he were, we were posing in the mirror, and I look over at him. I go, "You know why you're gonna get over?" And he's like, "You know, he's super stoned, so he thinks that like Kev's gonna give me this like this wisdom." I said, "Cause you got the coolest ring music," and he, I mean, he brought that up every time. That there would be anything that they could, years later where, where they, they would show like a clip and they would play his music, yeah. he would just, he would just look at me. I go, I know, coolest <laughs> ring music, like let it let it go. The great great entrance music has to hit hard from that first note, right? There's like that that glass breaking in Austin's thing. Uh, Gee, well, who had that first? Uh, the glass. Are you gonna tell me it was diesel? Yeah, a big truck ran through the fucking pane of glass. But wasn't it the? It wasn't the the horn. No, it was, uh, uh, and then the truck came and the truck smashed through the glass, and then I walked through. Okay, right. No, not right. She had no idea. No, I know. <laughs> I remember the horn. That's what I'm saying. It's the first. It's yeah, that could you first think? Hit. Could you pick? Do you remember my first music? All it was was over and over the the ah, ah, vroom, vroom. That, that was my theme music for like a year and a half. I thought you were going to reference the the Vinny Vegas. I mean, did it, did Steve die? I'm waiting. I'm waiting to to get switched to the two shot here. I'm not. I don't know. Am I, uh, what's going? On? Some, you're not, you're not on the two shot. No, I'm I'm seeing your close up. You seen the two? I'm seeing the two. Okay, I don't know. Maybe something's going on with my with my thing here. I thought we lost you, Steve. No. Um. Anyway, th- well, listen, because my fucking screen isn't working. This is a fine time to remind everyone that Click This is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast Heat. I'm glad I didn't scratch my ass or something, thinking that I wasn't in the shot. Uh, created by Kevin Nash, Tristan Nash, and Sean Oliver. Producer Steve Kaufman. Graphics by Dominic D'Angelo, title sequence and audio edit by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash, copyright 2022, Butch and Sundance Media. Now, are we are we always playing out on uh, Sophia? We play out on Sophia now. We certainly could. We do. Yeah, but I mean, but we could continue to do that. I mean, that's... Yeah, I mean... I, well, I would certainly I, 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 Well, I mean, it, yeah, I, 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 I like... Is that a problem with anybody? Ask Tick. And ask him if he wants to do another one. He said, yeah, Dad, but you get so sad when you come down here, maybe we should do it on Tuesday. <laughs> Sell the condo. Yeah, fuck, right? All right. Uh, Deuces, y'all.